And to you, my friends in the television audience, I really pray that our time together today will be like a conversation between two friends. God loves you. He always has, and he always will. And right now, he wants to bless you. So my message today is really a benediction, a good word, a blessing, especially for you. When I think of the challenges and opportunities you face, I long to share an inspiring benediction to help you expect and pray for the Lord's very best for your future. I feel your hopes and hurts, your problems and perplexities, because I have mine. We are one in needing a blessing from our Lord. And here's the essence of his presence in the five dynamic dimensions of how he wants to bless us. May the all-powerful, all-knowing, everywhere present Lord be with you. May he go before you to show you the way, behind you to protect you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. First of all, the Lord goes before us to show us the way. We don't need to be afraid of tomorrow. The Lord is already there. Isaiah affirmed this awesome assurance. And when he said, the Lord will go before you, you and I can move forward under the Lord's guidance, expectantly anticipating his direction for our lives. The Lord knows us better than we know ourselves. The psalmist realized this. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You understand my thoughts afar off. The Lord knows what is best for us. His ultimate will is that we should experience his love and acceptance as his loved ones who are destined to live forever. He also wants us to enjoy an abundant life now filled with his presence and power, and discover his individualized strategy for each of us. Listen, the Lord whispers in our souls, I have plans for you. I'll not allow anything to happen to you that will not bring you closer to me. Trust me, don't be afraid of the future. I'm already there. Now let's claim the second part of this blessing. The Lord also goes behind us to be our rear guard, to protect our backs. Again, Isaiah helps us with a momentous promise. The God of Israel will be your rear guard. Isaiah 52, 12. Often we hear the warning, watch your back. It's at our backs that the enemies of life attack us by surprise. I find that there are three enemies that sneak up behind us, hurting memories, troublesome people, and Satan himself. We need the Lord, our rear guard, to step in and proclaim, that's enough. This is my beloved person. You'll not get by me in your harassing attacks. The Lord keeps at bay the spears of hurting memories with the shield of his power. Unresolved hurts from the past try to sneak up behind us and attack us with stabbing memories of what we have done that causes us remorse or what others have done to us that makes us long for retaliation. Only the Lord our rear guard, the healing power of the world, can heal the pain of the past. He can expunge from our minds our disturbing memories. We also need protection from troublesome people. Our rear guard gives us discernment, x-ray vision, in order to be able to see what is causing their desire to undermine us. Sometimes jealousy, competition, envy, anger. He holds our enemies at bay 
until we can receive his strength to love and forgive them in spite of their undermining strategies. But our rear guard's most crucial defense is against the insidious influence of Satan, the force of evil in the world. The Lord has all power. Evil cannot resist the power of his name. He forms an impenetrable, he forms an impenetrable membrane between our souls and Satan's influence. I am your rear guard. Do not be afraid, he commands us. Next, consider the third part of the blessing of the Lord's presence. He comes beside us in life's struggles. He takes us by the hand and reminds us that he will never leave nor forsake us. That's a good thing. Struggles are the stuff of life for most of us. Few of us ever consistently feel good about ourselves. We have times of insecurity and self-doubt, times when we lack self-esteem. Anger is a stranger to none of us. Fears and frustrations track us like angry dogs. But not all of our struggles are internal. We face difficult situations in our families, at work, and in the community. Progress is slow. Conflict seems inevitable. But here's the good news. The Lord can turn our struggles into stepping stones. First, he helps us identify the struggle that is our deepest need. Secondly, he comes to us right now. Tell him about that struggle. Now turn that struggle over to him completely. Leave the results to him. Third, instead of asking, Lord, get me out of this, dare to ask, Lord, what do you want me to get out of this? And fourth, praise the Lord that he can and will intervene and unleash unanticipated strength you could never have imagined. Be sure of this, when you least expect it, the Lord will break through with help, perfectly timed, magnificently suited to your needs. Now, all of this is possible because of the next part of the blessing I want you to receive. May the Lord go above you to watch over you. His perspective is from a point where he knows the past and the future and can see what we need in every moment. With watchful care, he arranges circumstances, deploys people who will be able to help us, he opens doors, and does what might seem impossible to us. Isn't that wonderful? He has you and me as the focus of his faithfulness. The final phrase of my benediction is, may the Lord go with you to give you peace. One of the greatest promises in the Bible is Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. In the Hebrew text, there's not a word for perfect. The word shalom, peace, is repeated twice. You will keep him in shalom, shalom, whose mind is stayed on you. God's peace is total peace, encompassing all of the dimensions of our thought, emotion, will, and body, as well as our relationships and our responsibilities for justice. It is knowing that we're loved and forgiven, that we have trusted the Lord with our needs and have invited him to take up residence in our minds, to think his thoughts and in our emotions to express his love. This perfect peace is given to those whose mind is stayed on the Lord. 
But note the Hebrew word stayed, sumuk, is in a passive participle. The Lord stays our thinking on his grace and goodness. The result is that our mind, yetzer, in Hebrew, the constitution or tendency of the mind, is riveted on the Lord by the Lord himself. What a great assurance. You and I can live knowing that the Lord is not going to let us get him off our minds because we belong to him. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. When we invite the Lord to live in us, we experience the full-orbed power of his peace. Well, there you have it. The essence of the Lord's presence. Before, behind, beside, above, and within you. He wants to bless you now. Mm -hmm.